Exactly. Let's go to Benjamin. He's on the line in California, the line being Skype. Our username there is lrn.fm. Hey, Benjamin. Hey, guys. Hey. Um, I'd like to discuss a libertarian kind of like cliche, which is, and I use it all the time when discussing taxation, um, specifically like the income tax, that how from a philosophical point of view, uh, we are all essentially slaves. That if keeping and controlling 100% of the product of someone's labor makes them your slave, then kind of at what percentage are you no longer a slave or is that Good person question. no longer a slave? And uh, I use that a lot just to kind of get people thinking. But I hear some people use it, and I always follow it up with uh, kind of like a caveat, uh, and that is to say, but we are some of the best kept slaves in human history. Yeah, and yeah I that's hear true. People, and I hear people use this argument, and they don't make that caveat. And so people get into their minds, chattel slavery. Oh, right. you think they get whipped up on it? Some, some some of them really get hitched. Right. But you've really got to ask yourself if you take a very expensive uh, quarter horse, um, you know, and keep him in a stall and do whatever you do. I mean, that horse isn't free. That horse is kept. It is owned. And it doesn't matter whether it's some old uh, draft horse or some quarter horse. It doesn't matter the quality of the conditions. They're still owned. They're it is still... nice to be well fed versus starved, though. It is. Well, absolutely. I just uh, and I completely agree with it from a philosophical point of view and, and, and saying it. But something I wish more libertarians would do would be to point out that we are very well kept. So that way people can't go, oh, yeah, but, right. you know, we have this and we get this and what, go look, we're all fat and happy. That doesn't change the fact of what we are. That's a great you point. Know, yeah, you shouldn't just leave that one kept. hanging out there. You sh- it, it makes sense, I think, as you're pointing out, to follow it up with a little bit more detail and qualification. I think that's a good point. Yeah, I like. Uh, I think it's important to pull people's arguments right out from under them before they even have a chance to get at that. Way well, you can focus them on the philosophical point of the argument. You have to pull their arguments out from underneath them in a short fashion, in a very succinct fashion, because otherwise, if you're attempting to disarm them all ahead of time, you're just filibustering. Right. Benjamin, anything else you want to share tonight? Uh, just that I, I when I heard that uh, Dunkin' Donuts were being kept open— I thought it was a punchline. I did not believe it from the first few people <laughs> yeah. that told me, oh, but did you hear the Dunkin' Donuts got to be kept open? And I said, that's a joke. No, that is not a joke. joke. And, and what's, something- <laughs> what's crazy is I, I'm going through this article and St- uh, Starbucks is their spokesman says that when the lockdown went into effect, the stores were closed and their partners and customers who were in, in the stores were advised to remain in the stores. Hmm. So meanwhile, the Dunkin' Donuts, and there's actually a quote in here, to speak to Mark's point from earlier, they showed up to work because they didn't get a call not to. Mm, so see. the Duncan's workers showed up at the request of law enforcement, did their job. They didn't go home. Well, why not? The store's open. Yeah, to me, that's just, it's crazy. I mean, I uh, it, it just it just smacks of me of, as you guys were pointing out, a punchline to a joke. Thanks for the call, Benjamin. Appreciate hearing from you tonight on Skype. Username there again, L. 